SAIBC in Jackson, Mississippi with uh, finalist Katherine Barkman and her non-competing partner, Joseph Phillips, who is a former gold medalist, 2002 gold medalist at the USAIBC. So we're just gonna ask them a couple of questions about um, their performance tonight and how they're feeling. So um, my first question, Katherine, you were here in 2014. Why did you decide to come back? Well, I hadn't really planned to come back, but then uh, Joseph came and joined the company as our resident guest artist, and I was a principal with Sally and Ella, mm -hmm. um, and he had mentioned, like, well, why don't you try to go to Jackson? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of work, and, you know, we have, like, the whole season already. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, why not? You know, the opportunity to dance uh, and train with someone like Joseph and work more closely with my director, uh, was a good opportunity for growth. So I guess I did it more for uh, personal growth mm -hmm. than anything else. And you're a finalist this time, right? Yeah, that's like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was only 75 less the last time I came. Okay, so. okay, great. And Joseph, you are a former gold medalist here. What is it like to be back? Uh, I've been back quite a few times. The last time I was, I was here four years ago, um, I dance four years ago and then I've been back to the Gallas, but uh, I'm Southern, so I mean, being here is like being at home. So <laughs> I grew up in the South, so I love the food and the competition. Yeah. And, just... and the hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what will you guys be performing tonight? Tonight is the, the last of round three. We've had three nights um, of final round, so this is the last one. So what are you performing tonight? We're dancing uh, Grandpa Classique. And then we actually have uh, the world premiere, I guess, of yes. a new contemporary choreography done by Simon Hoy. Okay. Which is, I'm really excited about dancing. And you came just as a solo competitor last time. This yeah. time you're here mm -hmm. as, in a partnership. Does it feel any different? Yeah, it's much, when I, you know, when I first came, I was a junior soloist. So 17 doing variations is a big difference than you know, competing against professional dancers in a pas de deux. Mm -hmm. It's a different um, level and more is expected of you in terms of artistry and uh, professionalism. <coughs> yeah, I think they're not really looking for a kid who can do a lot of like cool tricks, I guess. They're mm -hmm. looking more for uh, someone who can command the stage and that's a different uh, level, I guess. So. Great. Um, not long after you competed last time, you started your professional career and you had quite quite an interesting journey. You yeah. uh, joined Valley Manila in the Philippines and were promoted quite quickly to principal dancer. Could you talk to us a little bit about what your career has been like? Yeah, I made a lot of uh, unconventional decisions, I guess. Like, I didn't really follow the normal mm -hmm. pattern of a typical young dancer who joined maybe a, a large company in the States or Europe and went through a studio company. I had offers to do that, mm -hmm. but something just uh, didn't sit right with me. It was like one of those times after Jackson when I just felt like, just wait one more year. Uh, the first time I came to Jackson, just wait one more year until you're 18, just wait, okay. Mm -hmm. So I waited and then I sent my resume out and one of the places I sent it to was Valley Manila. And uh, I got an email back from the director saying she was gonna principal and solo strokes right away. And as soon as I read that email, it was just that moment of, this is what you have to do. Yeah. So within two weeks, I packed four suitcases and I left my small suburban home and my family, <laughs> very sheltered life, and I moved to the other side of the world, not really knowing what to expect. <laughs> but um, it was a leap of faith, but at the same time, it was one that I knew was my path. I'm so glad I made that decision. And it came with a lot of hardships, you know, like living in a different country, mm -hmm. especially somewhere like the Philippines. It teaches you a lot as a person. You learn how to figure things out for yourself. And uh, as a dancer, it, uh, being promoted within one year to a principal, it was, I, I equate it to being thrown into the deep end. Mm -hmm. It was like, I got thrown into the deep end and like, is she gonna swim, you know, can she handle these? the pressure of, of uh, 
being a leader within a company on stage and off because you have to right. understand that it's not just on stage it's who you are off that kind of sets the tone for a lot of things so I've learned a tremendous amount as a ballerina as a person a lot of growth and I think sometimes making scariest decisions even not typical decisions you know force you to expand past what you thought you could do. And you, how long have you danced with ballet now? I guess about a year. About a year? Right, about a year. Yeah, about a year now. And you've danced in Russia and the American Ballet Theater. Yeah. And what has that been like? I mean, you've really had an international career. Uh, well, what I can say about Ballet Manila in Russia is that definitely the training is very similar. Mm -hmm. Uh, very very similar and the one thing that I'm that I liked about Russia and about uh, Manila versus working in the US is that uh, there's no that oh you have to do your dues you know I, I really I, I don't like I, I, I know that there's uh, history behind but it's nice to just be thrown into something mm -hmm. and see if you can do it instead of Oh well, let's wait till you're 30 to do Swan Lake, and so it's just uh, that I love that about Russian. I love that about Bali Manila. Those. Yeah. So. Cool. And Catherine, you've made the decision to become an, an international guest artist. Well, I was. Uh, yeah. So starting, I guess it was when Joseph came to the Philippines that uh, we got partnered together, and I was like really nervous at first, <laughs> but it's been um, wonderful for me to work with someone of his caliber and uh, learn from him every day. So shortly after he came, we started doing some guest things last year, and by this season, I realized that this was really my dream. I, I had to go back to when I was like a little, little girl and what I told my parents that I was going to dance all over the world. And that's the direction that I want to go. So, luckily, I have a, a main artistic director who's allowed me that freedom, but still given me. A, I, I really believe in a strong base because training for me is very important. And the training that I received in Manila, especially working with um, Malisa, is very Russian, it's very mm -hmm. strict, and it's very uh, growth inducing, mm -hmm. which is really mm -hmm. important. I don't like to be complacent with my class or technique or anything. So I'll be based with Bali Manila as their resident guest artist. And I will be doing other guest things abroad from there. I don't know what it's going to lead to, but it's another one of those intuitive yeah, that's <laughs> things. That's a really interesting um, career path and something mm -hmm. that I'm sure our readers are very interested in knowing, you know, how do you go about something that if that is your your ultimate dream so going into tonight's final round how are you guys feeling are you feeling ready more no. than ready I'm nervous ready. Yeah, you know I, there's all yeah <laughs> you, we can only be ready you know there's no other option there's no like of course you have the, I always have these thoughts like oh what if what if something happens if it doesn't go right that's good <laughs> I should <laughs> but um but I think it's also this mental discipline of, you know, what voice are you going to feed? Are you going to feed the fear that kind of tags at you mm -hmm. in the back of your mind? Or are you just going to, like, run, you know, run with it and trust your, trust your legs, trust your training, and enjoy at this point? Because, like, what's the point of doing all of this if you can't soak in every second of being on stage? I wouldn't go through all of this if I didn't absolutely love so no matter what anyone thinks of it, no matter what happens, it's like, this is my creative time on stage where all of the work comes together and hopefully it will uh, make people happy. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> that sounds like a very good attitude. So uh, with that, we're going to say Mayor for tonight and have a great show. And stay tuned. We will keep you updated as to the results. Thank you.